Hey guys, um, so I found these at the shop today and I thought I may as well buy them and do a little fruit tasting explanation video because I was going to show you um, a couple plants that I have of these purple mango seeds actually in the, in the garden. So I figure I may as well show you the fruit and give you some info about it and how to grow them and um, the seeds and how to sprout the seeds etc. So anyway, this is them here. This is Garcinia mangostana, also known as the purple mangosteen. Um, they call these the queen of fruits, and people say this is actually the best tasting fruit in the world. And I think I probably would have to agree with that because one, they are delicious, but you can get a lot of fruits where people can have different opinions on it, and I think nobody dislikes this fruit everyone who tastes this fruit says it's amazing it's sweet it's very subtle it's not too strong it's not too sharp flavors and um yeah so um i bought these were 30 dollars a kilo and um so these five were i think it was 11 australian dollars so that works out to be about seven eight dollars us if you want to compare it to your currency um yeah so anyway the way you open the fruit is well actually firstly i'll tell you if you're getting them from the shop you want to try and get the ones that have the most green in them so in the stem here a lot of these um, are grown in southeast asia and they're sent all over the world and by the time they get to whatever country you're in if it's far away this will all be brown and the flesh will actually be quite firm, like, like a rock. Um, so you want to have a little bit of give to them. So I don't know if you can see that. See that? So I'm lucky here in Australia because these are grown here in North Queensland now. Um, so yeah, this is the season here. We're really lucky actually because once our Australian season is done and then the Southeast Asian season swing starts in, so we get sent the Southeast Asian one. So we actually have purple mangosteens for a good four or five months out of the year here, which is very lucky for us. Um, yeah, like I said, they like really hot, humid climates. And we're here in Brisbane. I live in Brisbane and I have, um, we're in a subtropical climate. So I'm struggling to grow mine throughout the winters, but um, I've got three currently, one in the ground and it is growing and it's doing well. So I'll show you that a little bit later. So anyway, first of all, let me just show you how to open it. So if they are fresh enough, all you do is just squeeze the sides and then you should be able to just pop it open just like that. So they come in these beautiful little soft pillowy nodules, as you can see. And um, if they are, like I said, if they're a bit old, they're gonna be rock hard. Okay, so as I was saying before the helicopter flew over, um, if they are quite hard, then you obviously can't just squeeze it and break it and open with your hand. So you'll just score it a little bit with the knife. So just run your knife along the sides. And then you should be able Or not. <laughs> Hold on, I'm gonna have to score this a bit more. So, there you go. And then you just split it open. So, because this one is a little bit older, even though I bought them from the same batch and still got some new scent. They start to bruise a little bit, get some brown patches on them, but um, there's no worms or fruit flies that can actually penetrate this rind, so they're still perfectly fine to eat. So, yeah, okay, I'll take this one out and take, we'll give it a little taste. So you can just peel it off.
So this is the segments they come in or nodules. So this one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight in this one, this is a quite a large one. Um, and yeah, so the thinner ones like this will won't have a seed and then the larger ones do have a seed. So I'll just give this a taste now. Oh, so good. I'll give one to the cameraman. <laughs> mm. It is really difficult to describe the flavor. They're sweet. They have a slight tang to them, but nothing sour. You wouldn't call it sour at all. Um, It's got a pillowy texture, almost like um, like a marshmallow texture, right? So maybe a little soapy flavor, like a floral type of sweet flavor to them. Um, so this is the seed. Inside this is the seed. Um, so to germinate this, you want to do them when they're fresh. Definitely don't dry these out. And you actually have to peel off all of the flesh. So I'll show you how we do that because this can get quite tricky. <laughs> okay, so this is the seed. This is a lot clearer rather than this one because this one was so massive and had all the to get the flesh off um, as you can see it's very thin they're tiny and you are not supposed to just plant them like that so you still actually have to scrape and take the top layer off so I'll try and show you how that's done probably be a lot easier to get a paper towel and help with this Now it's starting to come off a lot better. And there we go. So that is the seed from that. Because these are quite large, um, like this is the size of you know, a baseball. This is bigger than a tennis ball. Um, normally they come like this size or even a little bit smaller, especially the ones from Asia. I find they're even smaller than this. And sometimes you'll get through, they'll have four or five wedges only, rather than six or seven like these have. And they won't have any seeds in them at all, because all of the segments are quite small. So because these ones are quite large, like that's two and I've got one, two, three seeds. So three seeds from two of these. Um, yeah, I might cut open this one. And because this is the largest, this is probably the largest one I've ever had actually. I think we're soft enough to just break open. Yeah, so you should be able to just crush it with your hand. Come closer a bit. Oh, these are massive. Look how big those wedges are. This is definitely the largest one I've ever had. <laughs> I think there might be seeds in all of these. Oh, nope. That one didn't have a seed. Excuse me one second while I just enjoy this.
Okay, they definitely have a slight mango flavor to them. Mango and banana, actually. Yeah. It's so difficult to describe this for the flavor of it. I'd say 5% mango flavor, 5% banana flavor, and 90% sweet, pillowy heaven. That's what it is actually, it's heaven. Okay, so we got three seeds from that one, which again is quite rare, but because these are so large, um, yeah, okay, I think I'll show you a couple of the plants that I have in ground. Okay, so um, I just forgot one more thing. These are the seeds that I got from the four mangosteens. This is the fifth one here. I'm going to save this one for a friend. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six. I threw out three because they were very, very small. These are actually the largest ones I've ever had. I mean, look how thick that is. Like, they're massive. They're normally more that size. Um, in growing these, they are very finicky. So last year I tried to grow, I don't even know how many seeds I did, 20. And two sprouted, one died after the first month. One made it um, about six months, it grew to about that big, and then it just stopped growing, and then over winter it succumbed to the chill. Um, so try the paper towel method, that's what I did before and that's what worked. So I will try these, and because these are actually grown here in Australia in the north, I think I may have a better shot because the ones I tried last year were from Southeast Asia and they're, you know, sprayed with God knows what to get into the country, chemicals and everything else. So um, yeah, be careful when you're trying to grow these. They're very finicky. Purple mangosteens, they like it hot, they like it humid, and they do not like to be moved or knocked around. Um, I have another Garcinia here, which is these. This is the Achacharu Garcinia humilis. And um, they're also growing these here in Australia now. They're farming. These are from Bolivia. Um, this is the seed for the achacha. You can get one or two, possibly even three, inside them. And these are tough as nails. So I have had, I'm growing about 50 of these. I've got a couple in the ground, um, two, three years old. I can show you those as well. Um, I haven't watered these sometimes for two weeks. They look sad, wilting. Give it some water, it perks right off. If you do that with the purple mangosteen, you will lose it. They are very, very finicky. Um, so yeah, I'll go show you the plants now. So this is my greenhouse, and right at the entrance I have my two purple mangosteens. Um, I've had these for about six months now, and I've got them in 65 liter trash cans, rubbish bins. Um, they have a very large taproot, purple mangosteens, um, so, a lot, so do a lot of the other Garcinias. So I wanted something really, really deep and sturdy that's going to last quite a while. So because they're fragile, I don't want to transplant them. Um, so I'm banging on these hopefully growing healthily in here for at least two, three years before I consider planting them in the ground somewhere. Um, yeah, so they are going through their growing phase at the moment. So you can see young shoots trying to push through. This one has the two new orangey bronze leaves there. That's the color that they come out at, and then they slowly start to turn light green and then a dark green. So yeah, it's a beautiful bronze color as you can see. The leaves are quite large. Um, I'm very happy, like look, I have large hands and they're just massive leaves. So hopefully they're absorbing a lot of that sunlight and the roots are growing quite well so they can survive. Um, I am in a subtropical climate here and 
my roof is 30% shade, just a shade cloth. So they're doing quite well over summer. We're in towards the end of summer here. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do over winter if I'm going to put extra protection because we do have mild winters here, but occasionally we do get down into the low. I don't know, what do we get? Five degrees Celsius at like the coldest throughout the year here. Um, yeah, so these are just some other the uh, cha chas that I was mentioning before. I've got a whole bunch of them, all the seedlings here. So these are a lot sturdier, stronger. I don't fuss on them. Don't need any cold protection, even though I've got them here in the greenhouse. If they were outside, they would have done completely well. So this is a durian. This is my latest purchase. Um, I can't stand eating it. The flavor, the smell, it just... It's so overpowering, but I'm a king for a grower, so I'm going to try grow this. Um, they do call it the king of fruits, and the Garcia, uh, the purple mangosteen is the queen, so got to have the king and queen, right? Um, he's just more baby a cha cha as you can see the seedlings, the actual seeds sitting on top there. This is my backyard. I've got way too many fruit trees at the moment, and way too little space. I think that's every fruit tree's problem, right? Um, I'm going to keep everything compact because I've got them quite close together, so I'm going to do a lot of pruning over the years, but um, it's what I want. So here we have my Garcinia area of my fruit forest. And this is my purple mangosteen, which has been in ground for a year, just over a year now. Um, I put it in, planted it before last winter, so I'd say, actually maybe like 10 months, I'd say. Um, it's getting some water at the moment here. I have it protected over winter, and I have put a, a literally plonk a plastic greenhouse over the top of it to protect it from the cold. Um, so this is some new flush, these nice green leaves that have grown in the last couple months. These are the two new, you can see that they're a lot healthier looking leaf compared to the other ones. So I had quite a bit of sunburn and damage from lack of water over winter. Um, yeah, and these are two leaves that are hidden under the lemon myrtle, which is why I guess they're a little bit yellow because they're not getting enough sunlight. Um, yeah, I'm going to protect it again over this winter. I think um, put the greenhouse right back on top of it because, like I said, they are quite finicky. Though it is growing, that was of height from last year. Well, once I planted it. So it's grown about, I'd say, 8 to 10 inches taller. Um, yeah, so I'm going to try my best to keep it alive. I want to have some fruiting purple mangosteens here. <laughs> um, this is the achacha. It's a quite large at the moment. It's about 5 to 6 feet tall. Um, as you can see, it's a lot more gangly compared to the purple mangosteen. The leaves have quite a little crinkle to them, where the purple mangosteen leaves are quite smooth and flat, a little bit glossy actually. Um, See, so this is a hedge of lemon myrtle I have, and that will eventually block out my neighbors and then provide a bit of protection for the Garcinias, because they are quite slow growers. Um, that is a Madrono Garcinia, and then I have Oh, uh, what do I have? I've got the yellow mangosteen in the back there, and then the bakupari, I think, I've got there as well. So, yeah. So, yeah, that's a kwai mok there, and this is my pergola I built recently. Everything seems to be coming together good. Um, some jibota cob is planted there. They're one of my other favorite fruits. So, yeah, thanks for watching the video, guys. I think I'll do a garden tour of everything. I've got planted and ground soon, so stay tuned for that video. Thanks for watching. Bye.